Cambridge here is um, Britain's cycling capital, so really if you're not cycling in Cambridge, then there's something wrong. And there's a big difference, people say, uh, do you cycle? And they say, no, I just use a bike. Do you see very quickly that it's, there's almost an even gender divide, and I would say just about as many women cycle in Cambridge as men. If you want to get from one side of Cambridge to the other, the quickest way to do that is on a bike. Cycling in Cambridge, it's easy to see why Cambridge has the highest rates of cycling in all of the UK. In fact, uh, almost on par with places like Amsterdam. And I think one of those reasons is once you have enough cyclists, behaviours start to change and more people are comfortable cycling. In October, we measure people crossing the River Cam. So on foot and cycle bridges and road bridges. And for cycling, that's giving us a figure at the moment of around 22% mode share. There's many other ways you could measure it. I'm sure if you only measured cycling in the centre of the city, it would probably give you at least 50%. I think one of the most important things in recent years was closing off the centre to motor traffic. So to stop the private car allows cyclists to go right through the middle in relative safety. The core traffic scheme is a way of stopping cars from entering the centre of the city unless you have permission. So if you're a taxi, a delivery worker, a bus, or you're on a bicycle or walking, you can't get through. What happens is that a bus comes along or a taxi, they've got a little transponder, the barrier lowers, that lets them through, and then they can drive off. If a car comes through uh, that is not allowed to get through, then the barrier stays up, they have to turn around, go back out and find an, an alternative way in. So for everywhere within the centre of Cambridge, there is only one traffic route in, one traffic route out. What that does is it significantly reduces the volume of traffic in the centre of Cambridge. So the amount of pollution has been reduced, the street life has increased, more people are walking, more people are cycling. It's just a fantastic environment now. That started happening about 15 years ago in various phases and we're now even looking um, at whether these sorts of closures could extend out even further. The more cyclists you have who are also car drivers, the safer the roads get. It's very easy when you're in a car to forget doing 30 miles an hour on a high street. Seems all right, but when you're on a bicycle and somebody passes you at 30, then you realise the difference between that and 20. Within Cambridge, there's been an active campaign to make 20 miles an hour the default speed limit for all residential areas. And so far, we've got about half the city converted to 20 miles an hour, and the other half of the city is coming along pretty quickly. We see more people cycling. We're also seeing a lot nicer environment. People are actually wanting to go out onto the street rather than being bombarded by traffic noise all the time. Cambridge is great to cycle around, um, mainly because of the numbers of cyclists, actually. It's more a normal form of transport, actually, than some other cities in the UK. I think there's definitely a mentality of, um, amongst cyclists that they have more right to the road than cars, which I support. The kids love it, having them in front of me where they can really see like the, the open space in the front and really see everything. And you know, you get to places even quicker with a bike than with, with a car, so it's really a no-brainer. We've also been very good at filtered permeability, closing off streets in predominantly residential areas to create a wide network for walking and cycling, but a very restricted network again for driving. Okay, so this is an early example of filtered permeability. The roads through used to go through here and cars could go through, but probably sometime in the early 80s these were all closed off and gates put in so that only cyclists and walkers could get through. So now these are very quiet streets apart from cycling and walking and the residential areas don't get any rat running traffic. So one of the interesting things is that you need to be able to get emergency access through here. So these gates have little barriers uh, that you can lift up and move out the way if you need to get through in an emergency, for example, a fire engine or an ambulance. And it's easy to get places and Cambridge is a place of like load of passageways as well, so it's quicker and it's better if you're on a bike. I think we've got a lot of beautiful countryside in Cambridgeshire so it's you know within a mile or two you're out on the country lanes and you've got some really beautiful rides so there really is riding for everybody. I think basically how compact Cambridge City Centre is really does help um, 
because it slows everything down. I lived abroad for quite a few years and I was totally used to going everywhere in taxis and when I came to Cambridge it was a complete shift of life for me, straight onto the bike and haven't looked back since then really. It's very expensive to park in the centre of Cambridge and the on-street parking is very limited so if you did go somewhere in your car you may not be able to park when you come back so again it makes cycling a much more attractive mode for those short city trips. Students in Cambridge, particularly at the University of Cambridge, are not allowed to have cars. Uh, so that leaves them with no choice but to walk, catch the bus or cycle. And I think it's the students cycling that give it the required base number of cyclists to start getting the behaviour change that encourages more cyclists. And if you start cycling as a student, you take that on through the rest of your life. Stay in that, that position. Yeah, good, well done. Look down the side road, fantastic. Today we're doing a bikeability level two training, which is training on the road on residential areas. Um, the whole idea is to promote positive relationships with other road users. One of the reasons we see so many children cycling in Cambridge is because their parents are confident and comfortable cycling. For young people, it, it's almost a cool thing as well. You'll see outside the schools, the kids want to cycle. You know, in large groups, it gives them all their freedom. So this street is a 20 mile an hour street. It's a main cycle route between the centre of the city and the railway station. And an awful lot of people cycle along here. Not, not just commuters, but people with children, elderly gentlemen, elderly ladies. Um, you know, it, it's just a nice, pleasant, quiet, friendly street to cycle along. When creating a 20 mile an hour street, you've also got to think about the entrances and exits to that. So on this street, we've got a separate bicycle uh, signal for the people on bicycles. So they get their own red traffic lights, they get their own things, they don't have to push buttons to cross the street. So we're on Huntington Road, this is a 30 mile an hour speed limit, but unfortunately some cars don't obey the speed limit. So they have a speed camera here and the marks on the road are delineating distance so that you can measure with two photos how far a car has traveled. The pictures are taken some time apart from each other and then they can literally measure how far your car had traveled along the road and therefore give you an exact fine. Where we are at the moment is the Cambridge Retail Park and on the other side we've got the Beehive Centre and this is where all the big box stores are for Cambridge and this is the kind of place where you'd expect a big car park which you can see here at the moment but luckily for us we also have lots of bicycle parking. We've got several of these dotted throughout the car park. They're close and accessible to the front of the stores. There's always a zebra crossing so you can get there safely. You've got bike lanes the whole way along. So you've got the dropped curb or the speed hump where you can come in. I can say I come down here nearly every weekend to pick up something for the garden. I always park my bike, load it up with flowers and uh, you feel quite safe. This is on a uh, cargo bike, a new aluminium version with 11 gears, an Alfine gearbox, and it does have electric assist. I think you should come for a ride in the game. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Get in. Old man like a lovely shoe. <laughs> We've got a lot of people up here now who have gone back to not having a car. It's not a status thing anymore. Well, in the 60s and 70s, if you didn't have a car, you were poor. Now it's the other way around. People go to the cafe and they've got a really nice bicycle or a cargo bike and that suddenly gives them a little bit of status. I think what we see at Cambridge at the moment is we potentially have reached a plateau when, in terms of the number of people who are comfortable cycling on the roads as they currently stand. And if we're to encourage the, the next level of cyclists, people who have never cycled before or who are less comfortable or potentially capable on the roads, we need to give them the infrastructure to make them feel safe. So in my view that is creating more segregation and a safer environment which then encourages more and better cycling. I think the population is due to grow by about 33% over the next 20 years and clearly if all of those people drive we're going to have a serious problem. We're going to have serious land use problems if they all own cars. So we are actively trying to build cycle networks, add in cycle parking, encourage a culture of cycling.